machines, the server, the packager, and the user machine. The streaming server acts as a domain controller, a web server, a database server, and a file server. The packager is a Windows 7 machine with the WISE Virtual Composer installed. The end user machine is Windows 7 with the streaming agent installed. It's best practice that your packaging machine is as close to your end user machine as possible. In other words, the operating system should be the same as well as the build level. You can have multiple streaming servers for larger environments. You can also leverage DFS for streaming packages. We have a couple different users created in Active Directory as well as groups. As you can see here we have Bart, Homer, Lisa, Maggie, Simpson as well as the SWS admin user. We also have security groups for different applications. This is because we're able to deploy applications per user or per group. Now I'm going to demonstrate the packaging process. For this, we're going to launch Wise Virtual Composer. We're going to choose File, New, Application Package. In this demo, I'm going to do WinZip. And I'm going to store the packages on a network share. Here I can provide information about the version of the application and some comments. This is the actual package ID. This unique identifier is given to each package when created. We're going to call this new layer WinZip. At this point we will choose the application we're going to capture. It's best practice to actually capture the command prompt. You can also select a template if one has been created. Now the capture process will begin. The reason I capture the command prompt is that it allows me to customize the application after the capture process has been completed. If I were to simply just capture the installation of WinZip, once the installation had completed, the capture process would have also stopped. This would not allow me to make modifications to the application such as entering a product key or modifying settings. I've already downloaded WinZip and I'll simply drag WinZip into the command prompt. In order for this to work properly, the UAC needs to be turned off on the machine. I'm going to run through the setup process as you normally would on any desktop computer. You can see that the capture process is active. Had I not captured the command prompt, the capture process would have ended at this point, not allowing me to input a registration code. Capturing the command prompt also allows me to test the installation and make sure it was successful. Once I'm satisfied with the results, 
simply exit the command prompt. At this point, all the information gathered will be stored in the packages folder that I defined earlier. I can choose to save the template that was created. Now the application has been captured. At this point, if I needed to make additional customizations to the application, I could launch the SWV admin tool. Here I can look at the registry settings that have been created for this application. I can also see the files that have been created, such as the desktop icon. If I wanted to, I could create additional files to go along with this application, such as a folder called Stuff. I will simply drag to the common desktop. This now becomes part of the package. You're able to modify the registry and variables associated with the application. I can also test it by activating the layer. You can see that the stuff folder is part of the layer that I created earlier. At this point, I'd like to demonstrate how the application layer actually injects itself in the operating system. We will notice on the C drive under Program Files, there is no WinZip. Also, if we go to Add and Remove Programs, there is no WinZip. If we go to the Registry, search for WinZip, we're not going to find it. It's also not in the start menu. Now I'm going to activate the layer. You can see that WinZip showed up in the program files. If I hit refresh, it also shows up in I remove programs. If I now search for it, in the registry, it will find it. It's also located in the start menu. Additionally, if we go to the desktop, we can also see it integrated into the shell. Now, I'm going to simply deactivate that layer and watch how quickly it is removed. It's not part of the shell anymore. It's not in the start menu. It's not in program files. I can again search the registry and it will not show up. You can also look at add remove programs. It's gone. This is how quickly the application can inject itself and remove itself from the operating system. This is just as simple for any other application I have virtualized here.